She's the only woman to ever become governor in either South Dakota, Iowa, or Minnesota. And she says people need to be thinking differently about the role women play in politics. Iowa Governor Kim Reynolds has been on the job for less than a year, taking over a big job and having to fill some pretty big shoes. I sat down with Reynolds at her office at the Iowa State Capitol in Des Moines, where I learned about her unlikely rise to political power and a place in political history. It's a story you will only see on KSFY. Last May, Iowa's longest serving governor, Terry Branstad, resigned his post to become ambassador to China. And sometimes we're called to serve in ways that we never imagined. Just minutes I later, his lieutenant Kimberly governor Reynolds. of six years, Kim Reynolds, Kimberly. was sworn in as Iowa's 43rd governor. I didn't set out to become a politician or an elected official. Before becoming <laughs> lieutenant governor, Reynolds had served 22 months in the Iowa Senate. Before that, she was a county auditor. And before all that, she lived a life that never included the idea of making political history. I wanted to be at home with the girls, but, you know, we had a hard time making ends meet. Early on, Reynolds' focus was on being a wife and a stay-at-home mom to three girls. But it became clear another income would be needed. So Reynolds worked nights and weekends as a checkout clerk for hy V. And in the back of her mind, a goal to earn a four-year degree. I so continued to take community college classes while working nights and weekends, and um, I did that throughout uh, my career. And it was in the midst of raising a family and trying to earn a degree that she would run for the Iowa Senate and win. And 17 months into her term, a phone call. I certainly never, uh, ever in my wildest dreams dreamt that I would get a call from former Governor Branstad asking to serve as his lieutenant governor. From that moment until now, where she is serving in the state's top job, Kim Reynolds has been in the spotlight, and she understands why. Well, it's just real humbling, I think, to live out history and to be a part of it, and, you know, that's not lost on me. Reynolds is balancing a lot right now. Clean water legislation, the state budget, and a huge problem with health insurance. Our uh, individual health care market had collapsed. At one time, there were nine insurance companies offering policies in Iowa. Now there is one, and Reynolds says the one that remains, Medica, has dramatically increased its premiums. We've seen premiums increase at 57 percent, and so still have... Iowans, especially, you know, farm families, working class families, small business owners that can't afford the 57% uh, percent increase in premiums. In the midst well, of I all this, Reynolds says the last thing she is focusing on is that she is Iowa's so first female governor. She says the idea of women in high-ranking political roles needs to be seen as something normal, not something historic. I'm really focused on doing the job at hand, and I think, you know, that'll speak for itself. While I'm very proud to be the first female governor of the state of Iowa, I certainly want uh, my chapter in the Iowa history to read uh, much more than that. To help open more political opportunities for women, Reynolds is focusing on younger Iowans, girls who show an interest in government. She shows them the Capitol, the chambers of the legislature, and then her own office. I bring them up to the office and I set them in the chair and I tell them to dream big um, because, you know, anything is possible. Remember Kim Reynolds' dream of earning that four-year college degree? She began working towards that goal in the late 1970s, but always kept it on her to-do list. In 2016, I finally, finally, at the age 57, uh, got my bachelor's degree and was able to walk across the stage at Iowa State University. And, and when you talk to Reynolds about the idea of a legacy, she says hers would be the idea that persistence really can pay off. If you're really uh, passionate about something or it's important to you, it's never too late. It's never too late to go back to school. It's never too late to change careers if you've got a passion to do something else. And we want to help uh, people, you know, realize that. And sometimes that passion leads you to places start. you never, ever expected to be. Now, for some context, the first female governor ever was Nellie Ross of Wyoming, who served between 1925 and 1927. In our neck of the woods, Nebraska's first female governor, Kay Orr, who served from 1987 to 1991. Tonight's story comes one week after we told you about a growing movement in South Dakota of women running for office on the local and state level. You can find a link to that story with this story on the KSFY News app.